Hi, let's talk about the thoracic sympathetic trunks and splanchnic nerves. In this video, we'll discuss the sympathetic trunks within the thorax. We'll also detail the key ganglia of origin, constituent fibers, and targets of the thoracic splanchnic nerves. When we discuss the sympathetic trunks, this is synonymous with sympathetic chains. These are series, both right and left, of paravertebral ganglia, so these are to the side of the vertebrae, which are connected by postganglionic fibers. Now within the thorax, we have a series of 12 ganglia, so that would be the ganglion associated with the first thoracic spinal nerve, so that's T1, T2, T3 ganglion, and so on and so forth. Um, each of these ganglia communicate with a ventral primary ramus, a VPR, of a thoracic spinal nerve. The first ganglion tends to coalesce with the inferior cervical ganglion. So there would be a cervical region of each of these cords. And recall that the ganglia of the cervical region are condensed into inferior, middle, and superior ganglia. And the inferior cervical ganglion and the first thoracic ganglion tend to coalesce together as the cervicothoracic, aka stellate ganglion. So this is inferior cervical ganglion plus the first thoracic ganglion. After this, all of these successive ganglia are numbered as they maintain their relationships with ventral primary rami, so T2, T3, and so on and so forth. These ganglia communicate with the ventral primary rami via rami communicantes. These are communicating branches. Rami communicantes come in two flavors. There are white rami communicantes, which conduct preganglionic fibers from the VPR out to the ganglion. There are also gray rami communicantes, which conduct postganglionic fibers from the ganglion back to the ventral primary ramus. It's the white rami communicantes, which have a limited distribution, so they can be found in association with ganglia from ventral primary rami of T1 through L2. T1 through L2 is the sympathetic outflow. That's why oftentimes people refer to the sympathetic portion of the autonomic nervous system as the thoracolumbar outflow. Whereas the gray rami communicantes, those communicating branches that conduct postganglionic fibers back to VPR will span the entire length of the vertebral column. So they could be found as high as the superior cervical ganglion at the base of the skull and as low as the coccyx at the ganglion impar where right and left sympathetic trunks are going to join. From these ganglia, various branches will go out to serve viscera, either in the thoracic cavity, if we're talking about the thoracic sympathetic trunks, or the abdominal pelvic cavities, if we're talking about abdominal, um, so, or lumbar, or sacral trunks. There will also be special fibers which leave various ganglia known as splanchnic nerves. And there can be splanchnic nerves throughout the sympathetic trunks, but the splanchnic nerves in the thorax are quite special. They consist of preganglionic sympathetic fibers, which never synapse within the ganglia. So, they're not synapsing in these paravertebral ganglia. They pass through these ganglia, such as these fibers here 
and these fibers here, and they coalesce with other fibers to form splanchnic nerves. So splanchnic is Greek for viscera or organs. And these thoracic splanchnic nerves are going to descend the thorax. They're going to pierce through the crura of the diaphragm. And they're ultimately going to synapse in pre-aortic ganglia. So the ganglia of the chain are paravertebral ganglia. The ganglia that these will synapse within are called preaortic ganglia because they are anterior to the aorta. It also bears noting that uh, visceral afferent fibers may be associated with sympathetics or parasympathetics. And within the thorax, visceral afferent fibers associated with sympathetic fibers are going to conduct pain, visceral pain perceptions. So within the posterior mediastinum, we can see splanchnic nerves descending down just anterior to the bodies of uh, vertebrae from T5 through T12 as they enter into the abdominal pelvic cavity. And there are typically three such aggregations of these fibers. The most superior and largest is called the greater thoracic splanchnic nerve, and we have one on each side. The greater thoracic splanchnic nerve is typically supplied of fibers from the fifth thoracic ganglion through the ninth and sometimes the tenth thoracic ganglion. These fibers are going to target the celiac ganglia the aorticorenal ganglion, and go directly to the suprarenal, i.e. adrenal gland. The greater thoracic splanchnic nerves are always present. They're the most constant among the splanchnic nerves. There's also a lesser thoracic splanchnic nerve. Uh, this is supplied from ganglia T9 to T10, and its fibers target specifically the aorticorenal ganglion, and this nerve is typically present. There is also the least thoracic splanchnic nerve. The least thoracic splanchnic nerve, uh, when present, comes from the T12 ganglion, and it goes into the renal plexus, and it is rarely ever present. Now, when we think about our dissections of the posterior mediastinum, when we think about the position of the diaphragm and how intractable it's going to be given the fact that there are abdominal viscera still in association with it, we're going to have a very difficult time seeing the lesser and least thoracic splanchnic nerves. So that central tendon of the diaphragm is generally at about the level of T8. And so we will barely be able to get a handle on the greater thoracic splanchnic nerves visually. So the lesser and least might be visualized best later on when we're able to mobilize the liver and other abdominal organs. And just for your edification, uh, so that these uh, are, are structures that, that you can kind of relate, even not being familiar with the, uh, the anatomy here, because this will come later, I wanted to show you some of these autonomic plexuses and the preaortic ganglia that these thoracic splanchnic nerves are associated with. And let's look at their inputs just briefly. So the greater, lesser, and least splanchnic nerves can all be seen here. We also have the posterior vagal trunk, which we can see descending here. And we can see how the greater splanchnic nerve is feeding into 
the celiac ganglia. We call it the celiac ganglia because there are two of them and it's in association with the celiac trunk. That's the blood supply to the foregut. Everything in green here is going to be mixed. Uh, yellow and blue make green, get it? Uh, the vagal fibers don't synapse in these ganglia. They move through the ganglia, but they also intermix with the sympathetic fibers to form these autonomic plexuses. So we have these celiac ganglia and plexus. There's also, in communication with the celiac ganglia and plexus, a superior mesenteric uh, ganglion and plexus, and because this is the superior mesenteric artery, that's the dominant blood supply to the midgut, and in association with the superior mesenteric artery, laterally we have the aorticorenal, so that is the target for the lesser. And then on the renal arteries, which serve the kidneys, we can see the renal plexuses. These renal plexuses are mixed um, and they are served by a variety of sources, but from the thorax, if it's present, we have the least thoracic splanchnic nerves. So these autonomic ganglia and the plexuses, they're going to serve the, uh, the gut tubes. They're also going to serve the, the vasculature that serves the gut tube. So they'll have a variety of, of uses most of which we'll focus on when we discuss the GI system. So we've discussed the sympathetic trunks within the thorax, um, their uh, association with ventral primary rami of T1 through T12, white and gray rami communicantes, as well as thoracic splanchnic nerves, the greater, the lesser, and the least thoracic splanchnic nerves, their associated ganglia and their targets. This is your summary slide. Thank you for your time.